Okay, hi everybody. So today we're going to be talking about the dorsal medial meniscus pathway. And the dorsal medial meniscus pathway is located in the posterior white columns of the spinal cord. So to give you an idea of what we're looking at here, imagine we slice my body in half and you're looking down at me, okay? That's the way you would see my spinal cords if you're looking from the top down. This would be the front of my spinal cord and then this would be the back. So Here's what the dorsal medial meniscus pathway does. That's a tongue twister. Is first off, it's going to do something called conscious proprioception. And what I mean by that is let's say you're sitting at home and your cell phone is on the couch next to you and you're watching TV and somebody calls and it starts to vibrate. So you reach over to uh, feel, get your cell phone. You know where your arm is in space. That's what proprioception is. It's your body's awareness or your awareness of your, where your body's position is in space. So you pick up the phone, okay? It also vibrates, right? That's another thing that's going to be carried by this pathway is the sense of vibration, okay? So now, the next thing is, is let's say somebody rubs on your skin, okay? They're just they're rubbing your skin like this. That's like touch. That is also felt by this pathway. Okay. And then the next thing is, it also does two-point discrimination. So some, some uh, books just call this discrimination, touch discrimination. So let me give you an example. At the end of this marker, there are ridges. So if I put my finger in there and I just move this around, I can feel the ridges, where they start and where they stop. That's basically the discrimination in touch. Two-point two discrimination is if I have two different things that touch the skin and being able to tell them apart. So in the posterior white columns, we have, um, we have two parts of the pathway. One of them is called the fasciculus cuneatus. Okay, this is going to feel sensations from basically T6 going up. So this is about T6 right here. And so it's gonna feel any sensations of these as it goes up towards the head. So we're gonna go say this goes from T6 up. And then from basically the feet up to T6, that's gonna be carried by the fasciculus gracilis. Okay. Now, once we get below T6, you don't really have the fasciculus cuneatus anymore. So below T6, we're just going to have the fasciculus gracilis. And again, we said this goes from T6 down. Technically, it's, it's from the feet up to T6. Okay, so now let's take a look at how this pathway would work. Oh, let me do some things again here real quick. Let me just grab a marker. This structure right here is the base of your brainstem. And this is going to be called the medulla oblongata. So what happens here is that's the base of the brain stem. So let's say this is my medulla oblongata and it connects to the top of the spinal cord. Okay, so this would be at the top of my spinal cord. And let me just fix this real quick. All right, then we're gonna have the brain stem here all right, and then if we go up, this is gonna be the thalamus that's up in here. So the thalamus acts as like a process, processing station or a relay station. So this is my thalamus right here, okay? So let's take a look what happens now. Like we said, let's say you're sitting on the couch, phone rings, you reach over to get it, you, your proprioception is occurring, right? Your conscious proprioception is occurring. You t grab the phone and you feel the vibration. This is what happened, is that signal's going to travel along, let me get a little bit darker color here, that signal's going to travel up to here, remember this is our dorsal root ganglion right here, this is full of um, cell bodies from our nerve. It's going to come into the posterior horn, or the posterior gray horn of the spinal cord. It's now going to go over into the fasciculus cuneatus because we're doing this from the hand. That's above T6. 
And from there, it's going to travel into my medulla oblongata. Now, once it's in the medulla oblongata, we have something called the cunate or cunatus nucleus right here, which is going to contain cell bodies also. All right? And so it's going to synapse in the cunate nucleus, which is in the medulla oblongata, it's going to cross over to the other side of the medulla oblongata. Then it's going to go up into the thalamus. Okay, and it goes into the thalamus. So like we said, the thalamus is a processing station. So from the thalamus, what's going to happen now is we are going to synapse again okay, to another nerve. Now, because we said this was coming to the hand, if you notice all these little lines that are right here, that's basically my cerebral cortex. That's the, if I were to cut the brain in the half and you would look at the outer part on the inside of the brain, that would be my cerebral cortex. In the cerebral cortex, there's a location called the primary somatosensory cortex, which is going to feel the sensations that I was talking about right here. For the hand, that location is located somewhere right in here. So it comes up to here, the nerve comes up to here, it's going to synapse, and then it would go over here to the primary somatosensory cortex, and then the brain would start to interpret these sensations that we were talking about. Let's talk about the foot. Now, let's say you're sitting on your couch, and you all of a sudden feel, let's say you're barefoot, and all of a sudden you feel a little bug starting to crawl across your feet, right? I'd have a few things going on. One, proprioception, conscious proprioception, because I know where my foot's at. I'd have my discriminatory touch if I can feel the legs going across. I also have light touch going on, right? Now it would go like this. It's going to come up like this. Same thing. I'm drawing the cell body down here. It doesn't really matter where I draw the cell body because this is a three-dimensional ganglion. So I have cell bodies facing in all different directions, okay? It's also going to go into the dorsal horn, just like it did with my uh, with my hand, and then it's going to go into the fasciculus gracilis. Now it's in the fasciculus gracilis. From the fasciculus gracilis, it goes up into the medulla oblongata, just like my fasciculus cunatus, and now instead of being the cunate nucleus, it's the gracilis nucleus that it's going to form a synapse in. So here's my synapse, right? It's in the gracilis nucleus. We synapse. We go across, just like we did with this. We're going to go up into the thalamus, just like we did with this here. And then from the thalamus, what's going to happen now is we said this is coming from the feet. This is coming from the feet. So if you recall, I said that we have the primary somatosensory cortex in this area where you see these lines. Well, this is for the hand over here. For the feet, that is located over here. So this is going to come up and go right into the primary somatosensory cortex in that part of the brain. And it's going to be interpreted. Okay? So that is the dorsal medial lemniscus pathway. That's a tongue twister for me. But that's the pathway and how it works. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, watch some more of my videos. Thank you very much and have a great day.